Hey there, marketing researchers and Excel users. In this video, we're going to implement an illustration of the test of two independent means, or the independent samples t-test using Microsoft Excel. The working example we have to illustrate this is when we want to compare between two different types of consumers, those who have an affiliation with San Diego County and those who do not, and then we want to find out if the average amount of money they're willing to spend on a six pack of craft beer of Stone Brewing brewed in San Diego is different or not. We already have a variable in our data set called SD County that clearly separates people into lives, works, or goes to school in San Diego and those who do not. And max price stone is the direct numerical codes that someone's willing to spend on a six pack of craft beer for stone. So we really have the information mostly set up for us to conduct this analysis. Let's confirm how we got to the application of this statistical test though. How do we know we're making the right choice? Well, first, it's clear based on our analysis objective, we want to compare between two independent groups. If someone lives or works or goes to school in San Diego County, they're in one exclusive group. And if they don't do any of those things, they belong in a different group. So these are a single independent variable where people live with two different levels in their independent groups. Next, since we want to calculate an average from a ratio level variable, right? The price that someone's willing to pay dollars and if it's measured in exact dollars, it's ratio level data, we can calculate an average. So this is interval and ratio level data here. And although we're not going to show it right now, there is a roughly approximate normal distribution to this data. We don't worry about that detail too much because it often can be violated and yet the, st the statistical test will still perform admirably. By thinking through our analysis objectives and our data set and following the statistical test roadmap that tells us we should use the independent samples t-test. So let's formalize our hypotheses. Our first independent group are those who are not in San Diego County. And the second independent group is those who are in San Diego County or affiliated with San Diego County. And our variable of interest, our dependent variable, if you will, is average price that someone's willing to spend on a six pack of stone craft beer. So our hypothesis is that the groups will have the same average price willingness to spend on stone. But more formally, where we articulate the null and alternative hypothesis, the null is that groups will have the same average uh, willingness to spend on stone craft beer, whereas the alternative hypothesis is that members of the groups will have a different average dollar that they're willing to spend on stone craft beer. This is a formal articulation of our research hypothesis. But again, as is often the case in marketing research, a more jargony or informal approach is used when people characterize their hypotheses where they just call their hypothesis, which is actually their alternative hypothesis, and they merely say the groups will have a different average dollars willingness to spend on stone. And again, if you're new at marketing research, it's your responsibility to parse that they are talking about the alternative hypothesis and the null and alternative hypotheses when spoken in totality have to encompass all possible situations. Now to actually conduct a statistical test for the mean differences between two independent groups, we're actually going to assume that in all of our applications that we're going to be dealing with a sufficiently large sample size, uh, roughly speaking, 30 participants in each of the two groups at least. So actually, we're not going to be using the independent samples t-test. Rather, we're going to be using a z-test. Once you have a sufficiently large sample, the math gets a little more simple on the statistical testing side, and we can actually just use a z-test. Our formula is the following. The z, our critical value, is going to be equal to the average, in our case, price willing to spend of one group minus that of another. But we're going to have to also divide that by the standard error of the difference between the two means to account for the fact that this is coming from a sample. And we have some error or uncertainty associated with these estimates relative to projecting them to the whole population. I'm just restating our null and alternative hypotheses here again. Our alternative hypothesis is a difference in the average dollars between the two groups. And how this is going to work is if the resulting absolute z value that we calculate here is greater than the critical z value that we specify for our test, we'll reject the null hypothesis. Uh, typically in marketing research, we generally send our, set our level of confidence for statistical testing at 95%. So therefore our critical z value that we'll be investigating is at the baseline of 1.96. And we'll be observing to see if our value is great or the absolute value is greater than that threshold. So to conduct this test of two independent means in Excel, 
we will in fact use the Data Analysis Tool Pack. To conduct this test in Excel, we are going to be using the Data Analysis Tool Pack. So we'll merely navigate to our Data Analysis Tool Pack tool in Excel. If you haven't have it installed yet on your version of Excel, just simply Google how to install it on your version of Excel. It's quite easy. You won't have any difficulty. And from the menus, scrolling at the bottom, we'll see that we actually have a Z test for two, sam uh, two samples for their means. Now let's think about whether or not our data is properly prepared in our data set to actually conduct the statistical test. Here's the menu that we'll see where we have to input relative values to actually conduct the statistical test. And the most important one at first here is where we select our variable one range and variable two range. This is where we're going to place the first range of values that represent the all the different amounts of money that one of the groups is willing to spend on craft beer. And the second variable is the all the range of individuals, so those who are in, uh, in San Diego County, and what they'll spend on craft beer. However, this is where our relative values are that we'd select in this range, but we're not ready to go yet. Look at the column that says SD County. Notice that there's ones interspersed with zeros. What does that mean? Well, currently, that means our data set is organized in such a way that there's a mixing of individuals who both are in San Diego County and are not in San Diego County. There's nothing wrong with it being this way, but it's not going to work for our current needs of analysis. We need to organize our data set that all the ones are in a all in a row, and all the zeros are in a row. That'll allow us to properly select the range of max price stone. To fix it in Excel, we will select the entire range of our data set and then go to the sort and filter icon. We'll navigate to the SD county variable and we'll sort from smallest to largest. In other words, it'll place the zeros first and then the ones later and reorganize our data set for us in the way we need. It'll look something like this. Notice how the ID numbers no longer go in consecutive order but they're all zeros and they continue so until the ones show up. Perfect. When it's set up this way, we'll be able to properly select the right sets of values to run the test. Let's hop into Excel and do that now. With our data properly organized, we're not quite done yet to prepare our data. Look at these input rows here. For variable one and variable two, so the average price willing to spend for the San Diego County and non-San Diego County groups, it actually wants us to manually type in the amount of variance. Where are we going to get that variance estimate for each of the two groups from? Well, we'll use a simple Excel function to estimate that for us. We'll simply use the equal var.s, so variance from a sample. We'll select the range, the two different ranges from the non-San Diego group and the San Diego group. This is their price willing to pay. And these values will then give us the actual variance estimates. And we'll take those numbers and then manually type them in here. Let's go hop back into Excel and implement these functions. Okay, now we have everything set up and ready to go to conduct our test. First, we'll select all of the values associated with those who are not in San Diego County and their price willing to pay. Then we will select all of the price willing to pay for stone beer for those individuals who are in San Diego County. Our hypothesized mean difference is where we place the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is zero dollars. And since we already calculated the variance previously, we will manually type those two variance estimates in and then we'll set our alpha level to 0.05. An alpha level of 0.05 corresponds to a 95% confidence level. Let's go plug those numbers in and run that test and interpret the results.
The results of our test are reported for us in a new spreadsheet. I added a little bit of labeling here in red that makes it just a little easier for us to interpret some of these results. One thing that immediately leaps out is the average values between these two groups for a stone craft beer six pack is not very different, only a difference of 14 cents on average. But what does our statistical test actually say? Is this 14 cents a statistically detectable difference? Well, we set the level of confidence uh, that we want at 95%. That means we'll reject the null if the absolute value of our Z is greater than 1.96. However, we see here that our Z value is negative 0.392. If you took the absolute value of this, it'd be 0.392. It is not greater than 1.96. Therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, meaning even though we see a small difference on average spending between these two groups, we're not willing to claim that there is really a difference. We're not confident enough. I'm not going to show it here in this video, but as an extension, if you want the confidence interval of your observed difference, so this 14 cents here, if we showed the 95% confidence interval of this difference, what would the range be? would be the high end of the range and the low end of the range. That can be a useful thing to report. If you want to do that, I've provided some links to online calculators that'll actually derive confidence interval that difference for you. Unfortunately, the data analysis tool pack doesn't provide that particular way of summarizing the statistic. Now, how do we actually report these results? There's a lot of statistics here, but in reality, very few of them are relevant for reporting. They're more for the analysts just to make sure they understand that they're interpreting the results right. In our results, we would merely write, overall, people who lived, worked, or went to school in San Diego County were willing to pay $8.96 on average for a six-pack of stone beer, while other people were willing to pay an average of $8.82, a difference of 14 cents. Our statistical test comparing these two means was not statistically significant at a 95% level of confidence, Z equals negative 0.392. Therefore, we failed to reject the null hypothesis, that is, we are unable to conclude whether there is a real difference between these two groups with respect to the average amount of money they would spend on stone beer. Now that was a rather verbose way of interpreting the statistical test. It took us nearly five lines, but it was a complete interpretation of that test. If we wanted to be a little more compact with our writing, either because we know our, our readers don't want to know the deep details of our statistical test, but no, they want to do it, or because we trust they're sufficiently sophisticated that they could go review our appendix or our detailed statistical testing themselves, we might write the following. Overall, people who lived, worked, or went to school in San Diego County were willing to pay $8.96 on average for a six pack of stone beer, while other people were willing to pay an average of $8.82, a difference of 14 cents. There was not a statistically significant difference between the means. Wow. First of all, notice how those, that first part of our results really isn't a statistical test. We can calculate averages and then just describe the average difference between the two of them. The statistical testing results is all the part that goes at the end. In our compact writing version, we simply say there was not a statistically significant difference. We did a whole lot of work to write that one sentence. But what's going on here is if we write that one simple sentence, if our reader is sufficiently sophisticated, we're expecting them to unpack a lot of ideas. One, we're probably asking them to assume that we use a 95% confidence level. We didn't specify it, so if they're familiar with ways that are, uh, the way the analysis done in, is done in marketing research, we think they're going to assume it. Further, we didn't get into any detail about just how poor the results of our statistical test were. We merely said it was not statistically significant. Again, that might be sufficient, and it does save a whole lot of space. Now, in terms of how we might visualize these results, well, Simple bar chart does a wonderful job here. Simply report the two separate groups as two different bars and report the average value. We could certainly put a footnote at the bottom that there was not a statistically significant difference between these groups if we wanted to make sure our statistical test was also summarized in our visualization. And that wraps up this video. In this video, we identified a research question, properly identified the right statistical test to use to investigate that research question, which was the test of two independent means, we then identified how to apply that test in Excel. We inspected our data set and cleaned up our data set and modified it so that it was ready to actually perform that statistical test. We then implemented that statistical test. We reported the results and we had a discussion about how we may choose to have either a more thorough or lighter presentation of those results. That's it.